Hey YouTube, this is a look inside the ICS M1 Garand. Mine quit out on me on a game uh, a week or so ago, um, which is kind of a bummer, but um, you know, shit happens. Um, at first I thought it was a fuse because, you know, no power, but uh, once I saw the fuse was intact and, you know, I even tested it with my multimeter, even though you can, it's obviously when they blow, they blow and you can see it. Oh, I, I put Dean's on there, it doesn't come with Dean's. Um, I was like, well, I'm going to have to delve further into it and test the MOSFET and all that. It does come with a MOSFET on the, uh, the negative wire, uh, if you're wondering. Um, so, let's get into this. I've already been inside this, um, you know, <laughs> before, I, before I started filming. So, it comes with an M120. Um, so, I was shooting about uh, 430 with twos, but I was using three twos that day. So that's just about what the FPS is. Um, uh, Turbo 3000 motor, and if you look on the outside here, it's uh, it's kind of a cross between the Tokyo Maori version 7 and you know the clones like the Saima and Cartino, and the uh, the G and G and its clone, the Classic Army uh, version 7 gearbox. Um, they can't both be version 7. <laughs> well, we'll just call the Tokyo Mario the version 7, and the, the G&G &G and the Classic Army are their own sort of thing. But if you look, um, like the G&G, &G, it has the cutout on the top uh, over the spring. It has the wide spring steel uh, keeper up here. The uh, Mari has the, the narrower one. Um, it uses a it's not the same, but it uses a transfer bar system for the trigger on the um, on the G&G &G as well with the screws, sort of, sort of like that. It's been a little bit since I've looked at the G&G &G one. Um, I had to like glance online to make sure I was like, hey, yeah, that looks funky because it's not like either. But it's similar, but a little different. Um, the G&G &G doesn't have this. The Maori style ones have this. Is where your selector would go in M14. This leads me to believe that ICS is probably going to make an M14. Which would make sense if you're going through all this effort to uh, make the Garand, you know, make an M14. It'll just sort of offset the cost. Um, the Maori style ones are flat on the bottom here. These uh, the G and G is, you know, curved to kind of fit the gears better, uh, hook the gears. Um, the G and Gs have this straight sort of um, bracket, which is it's different, you know, but it's similar to that on the. Uh, Maori style is kind of curved off and over, and they're hard to adjust. There's not much adjustment in this, where this has like plenty of adjustment. So whatever motor you put in there, it's going to be uh, able to be adjusted correctly. But I've had some trouble with the with the Simon ones. You put in a motor, aftermarket motor, and you have no room for adjustment. It's just almost it's pretty much up against the uh, the back, um, and those kind of like hook down and over, so they can you know you stick your Allen in the grip. Um, that's not like that. Um, G and G is similar up here. I don't think it's this long, but I know it goes past the ear nozzle. Um, you know, a couple of differences, but it's a it's an amalgam of the two. And here's the other side of it. So this is like the G and G. The uh, Myri has this god awful assemblage on the side with the sliding thing and licks the carbon up and get broken, which I don't like. But it also has the screws where you put the plate, like on the on the Maori. So, you know, we'll see what they're uh, what they plan to do with this gearbox down in the future. So, if you look here, um, I pretty much got this fixed. Um, but oh, to get into the gearbox, you have to, you have to take this off. I put it back on because there's a screw hidden right here. But uh, one, two, three screws. For the gearbox and two for the motor and of course the plate on the top. So let's take this apart. Take a look at the inside. The shimming was actually pretty decent. I shouldn't say, say actually because the the ICS Proline guns usually are assembled pretty well. Um, it's a standard version 2 gears. Um, again the Mari uses version 7 gears which are slightly different. It has a version 7 style nozzle um, the cylinder head and nozzle. The nozzle is o-ring inside so it, uh, it has good compression. Um, I tested it, you know, before I, you know, because I can't do it because I only got one hand because the other one's on the camera. But it has good compression from the factory. It's a full cylinder. 
Um, it has a crappy. They must have just millions of these. I've never seen an ICS to come with something else other than one of these. It's the uh, um, plastic spring guide. You know, it feels like polycarbonate or something. It could just be because it's slick in my hand. But this is going. I have a generic ball bearing spring guide I'm going to put on it. I think it's a classic army. So yeah, gears, nice steel, uh, decently shown from the factory. And this is the tablet plate, similar to Maori style version 7. And uh, the piston is Palm, which is uh, Delrin Acetel, um, I think it's polyoxide methylene, I think is what Palm is an acronym for. Um, very durable, very durable piston. And it's got, uh, looks like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven metal teeth. And, you know, the pre-gap down there for angle of engagement. And ported piston head, which is made out of a different, it's probably polycarbonate, and this is, but this is definitely um, Dalrin. So that'll be nice and durable in there. So getting into why my gun didn't work, my little uh, spring right here had popped off the post. And that kind of sucks. So it wouldn't uh, wouldn't reset. So there was like less... I couldn't really tell because there's a spring in the, uh, in the trigger assembly. It has a pretty stiff spring. So I couldn't really tell that it wasn't, you know, pulling it. I was like, oh, it probably blew a fuse. Because um, I was using 11.1 that day because I had one charged and it fit in the stock. But I have a 7.4 that can easily fit and probably... I don't think it's, it's not... it's unrelated. But I will say with 11.1, it would double cycle. Which is annoying when you only have 40 shots. Um, so with 11.1, like 15C, it, um, I think 2100 uh, milliamp hour battery, it, it fired two BBs for each, each pull of the trigger. Uh, a 7.4 and a 9.6, you got one shot, so it's just the 11.1's too strong, uh, just for the motor, it's just over, over spinning it. So yeah, with that off, um, it's kind of, uh, I guess the only really way you could tell about taking the gun apart would be... Oh, and if you look on here, it's got this little post that interfer interfaces with that right there. So it shouldn't have come off, but I don't know. I don't know how that happened. So let's stick this back together. And the, you look, if you take off the, uh, the trigger assembly, which is pretty easy, um, you could do it in the field. You'll notice that uh, if you stick like a knife blade or something up there, it would be kind of... it won't go back. So, you could slide it forward and back and, you know, and if the you know, gears are in the right spot, it would actually fire if you pushed it forward or get stuck on... Actually, I don't think it gets stuck on full auto because it has no selector. Actually, yeah, look at that. It's provisions for a selector. Kind of interesting. Well, not interesting. I, I think they're coming out with the M14. But, um... It can only be semi-auto, so it would shoot once, and then probably get stuck and fry your battery or something, or blow your fuse. But that is one of the ways you can tell if it's uh, if your spring jumped off that little peg, which is kind of annoying. I mean, the gun was new, and I had shot it a bunch of times. Um, but you know, once I took it out, it was the first time I took it out in the field, and. Uh, after, you know, before the first clip was even done, it, it stopped working. I was like, oh, come on, Murphy's Law again. But, um, yeah, it's the internal view. The parts are pretty good. Um, I'm going to see about just maybe putting a little notch in there so it holds it better. Um, and then just uh, shooting it a bunch more times before I take it out to another game. Uh, thankfully, I had my grease gun. The grease gun has been just wicked dependable, the ICS grease gun. Um, once you get over having no mid caps and that funky battery, um, it, uh, it's a really good gun. But um, I look forward to using this again in the next World War II game and you know, even the next probably uh, Vietnam or... Uh, well, there's a World War I game coming up. That RPC Battle of Haiti, I think it's in June. I'll put the link in the uh, description to when that is. So as always, um, you know, like, subscribe, comment. Um, 
stop by, I'm usually at Master Hobbies. Anyway, have a good one.